The Marriage of Figaro by Mozart, and I play that especially for Mrs. Marie McMahon Hanley at 76 Wolf Torn Street, Limerick City. For Marie and all her music lady friends who go all over Europe in pursuit of good music. I hope you like that, Marie, and all your friends. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Tom O'Donnell here now, just gone a few seconds beyond midnight, and I have an interview with a gentleman that I have been hoping for a long time would come into me about a particular matter, and that we're going to do tonight. Uh, so sit back now and relax, because my friend tonight is none other than, well, he was a businessman up to very recently, but now he's beginning to enjoy real life now. So Vincent Finucane, welcome. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Nice to see you. Thank you. A fine, fresh, young reti retiree are you. Well, I have retired uh, just since the 1st of February, and I'm very happy about it. I feel that I need a break after 42 years in business. 42 years. Well, yeah. you paid your dues. Yeah, I did. You did. <laughs> Vincent, you, if I do say so now, you're looking very healthy and very happy. Thank you. And then how's your good lady and marvelous. girls? Two girls are marvellous. Splendid. Well, now, Vincent, you have been with me in the past, not in recent years, but many years past. We talked magic, and we talked entertainment, and we talked a lot of things. But this time, tonight now, you're coming under wearing a different hat tonight. Right. You want to reminisce yeah. about the part of the city that gave you your livelihood. That's right, yes. And as I said earlier on, you probably weren't listening, maybe you were getting ready to come down. Yeah. I said... Uh, I was going to present tonight in the programme here not uh, a hundred years history, but a hundred yards, Y-A-R-D, the measurement, a hundred yards of history, because we're going to talk of a hundred yards outside the door of the premises that your successful premises, premises where you had in Upper William Street. That's right. So there's so much to be told about it, all parts of Lurick, that even till, while... Uh, it's uh, city orientated. Limerick City and County, we are thankful to them. They have come in and buy all our goods, buy all our stuff here, and leave a lot of money in the city. And most of those people listening tonight now, many of them, will have, at one time or another, done business at the part of Limerick that you love so well. Right. That is Upper oh, William. William Street. Right. So we are talking, in fact, now we'll get into it in a moment, because you have a lot to say, and I, I have a lot of listening to do, and that is, we talk at the top of William, which is Upper William Street, yeah. and the part that we're concerned with is the block, the square that contained your business. Vincent right. Pinocchio and Company, wasn't that it? That's right, yes. Now, Vincent, we'll start with the, first of all, Vincent, you haven't retired, actually. I mean, you're, you're one of you have retired in business. I have, yes. But no, I know that you've been all over the world and you've enjoyed life. You've played a lot of golf yes. and you enjoyed life fully. Right. But you're going to enjoy it more now. I think so. And I, I hope that this is the beginning. Okay. The many visits to, up to RLO. Right. I hope so. No. Vincent, yeah. you had very happy years up there. Yes, I was up there 42 years. When did you uh, start, Vin? 1959. No, sorry, 1958. And a coincidence, it's the same night as Drumkeen Boredom opened outside Patty Hayes. Patty Hayes, you opened the, the oyster. I did. Uh, at that time, I had a smaller shop up her home improvements is now. And, uh, oh, you had? That's right, a smaller place. And that was the night that we celebrated because at that time I was doing electrical contract work and I did electrical contract in... in Drumkeen Ballroom. Your own so business, isn't you? That's right, which was a double celebration. We were down to the dance, uh, we have to wire the ballroom, and then from the shop, I mean, we opened a small shop, uh, a very small shop, but I was glad to have a, a start in life up in the top of Williams. Yes. That's where you began. That's where I began. Then we moved down to 50 but, upper Williams. Before Street. you went yes? down, you, told, you mentioned there yourself that you're a contractor. That's right. Did you do contracts for housing estates and schemes? I did, yes. Uh, quite a few of them. And we did a lot of work around Munster, I would say Munster. Churches and schools and all that type of thing. And you did only it. got sold? That's right. did a lot of work for Paddy Butler, all his houses around the city. Exactly. And parks, you might remember him. Yes, I and do. People like that I did an amount of schemes around the city at that time. Did you? Yeah. And, and Vincent, one might ask, where did you learn your trade? Yeah, I became, I, I served my time at, at G. Clancy's in O'Connor Street, and I was with him a total of nine years. Music shop and electrician? That's right, yeah. That's nine years with him? Yes. 
Okay, and then you went in your own. I did, yes. Oh, you were a brave young man. <laughs> I was. <laughs> but Vincent, you're from Clark in Leisha. That's right, born outside the place called Bohor, County Limerick. Is that on the main road? On the main road. The left hand side going out. That's right. There was four bars, four pubs there when I was born. There's only three there now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, one, a loss of one in, in 40 years. That's right. Isn't bad going. Isn't bad? But you hurled with... with uh, yeah, we hurled with uh, Bohr and then Maru Bohr for many years. Oh, yes. Many years, yeah. And your brothers? Yeah, there was... Believe it or not, there was five brothers in the, in the one team. And there was four... Five for no Yeah, years. and the one team. And there was four O'Connors from Bohr on, on the same team. There was nine with two families. Two, but, 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 uh, but the Finocans. Yeah. Well, no, incidentally, now, before we get on yeah. to the yeah. Upper Willem Street... Yeah. Your brother John, was he chairman of the, co- of the county council? That's right, he was, yes. John Van Oken. Yeah. And also chairman of the Horseshaw Committee. That's, that's quite right, yes. Yeah. John, yes. And a singer with the Sicilians. <laughs> he was, yes, he was. You yeah. told me I'm in the Hall of yeah. Fame with that's you and John. That's right. In, what was it? Our, our Miss Gibbs. Uh, I have it up in my house with a posters of it of our Miss Gibbs. Our Miss Jerry O'Dowd and Kay Condon were the leading parts. McCloskey. That's right. All those sorts. Hilda. Janine. Yeah, that's right. Joe Dalton. Joe Dalton, yes. Ring. Paddy Ring. And Eamon O'Connor. Eamon O'Connor. He was in it, yeah. God, they, they were all, they were all celebrities, weren't they? <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> Hilda Moore. Hilda Roach Moore. Hilda Moore, oh, yeah. Oh, lovely. lovely. Have you got that photograph? I have, yes. Well, now, you'll have to get a copy of that. And Con Shannon was the producer. He time. was, of course. He was, he was of course. Con yeah. Shannon. That's right. But tell me, Eria Vincent, you were contractor now, and then you decided to go into the retail end of it. That's right. Yes. No. Here is where we begin our conversation. You okay. cross the road. Yes. To where? To a place called uh, William Walls. It's, uh, it's 50... Willie Walls. Willie Walls, yeah. Over the door was Liam de Ball. That's quite right, yes. Liam, D-E-B-I-D-A-B-L. That's right. Some of us had difficulty in pronouncing it. Liam de Ball, that's the word. That's right. Yeah. Now, if I recall correctly, because during those times, around that time, I was a hardware tycoon down in Cotton Mark and Raw That's selling right. enamel chambers you are, yes. and subsidiary <laughs> products <laughs> and ancillary products That's right. but, uh, but Liam the one now if I recall Vincent when you took that over it was a very old fashioned weird now excuse me yeah. I say that respectfully okay. it was a weird looking business yeah, old was, stone that's right it was very yeah, old, well it was old stone and it was um, I think there was arches there one time it, it, was had, it had its own beauty it had yes and uh, it, it was a draper shop and they used to cater a lot for elderly women's wearables outside uh, yeah, outside yes oh, large ladies large ladies yes yeah. 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 Well, now, as a matter of fact, Vin, yeah. wasn't there a lovely, beautiful, dark-haired girl there who married, married Jerry Kelly? That's right. The flower and meal. Quite right. That's right. That was a, um, uh, m- m- Mrs. Wall's daughter. That's right. M- yeah. Well, uh, Jerry, unfortunately, as you know, yeah. had a sad end. He had. He died very suddenly. He was... He, uh, he was knocked down late at night when he got a, a, a message that his place had been broken into. That's right. Sad, a sad episode. A sad With a lovely lady, his, his widow lady. That's right. She's up, living up in Roxburgh. She yeah. is. Lovely family. So the walls moved out and you took the walls and, over. And, and we moved in. <laughs> right, yeah. Had you to make many refurbishments inside then? Yeah, well, we had to change all the front windows and upstairs now. But it's three floors and still three floors, you know. Yes. And uh, it is a fine building now. So move. did you go to the retail in then? Yeah, well, television, as you know, came on the line and that was a very big business. Oh, I mean, was huge. Uh, Colour television, then you had RT2 and it built up. What, what can, I, can I ask you, Ben? Sure. What was your first few months like in a, a video store that was brand new to the public. Well, I mean, there was a... all crowds around your window. <laughs> there was a good... Yeah, we had, we had a few... We had an opening sale there, it was very big, which was great. And uh, you know, when you have a good window, people see different things. Television was very big at that time. I mean, everybody was getting television, and that's what, what made course, me... I must tell you this now, yeah, Ben. Yeah. Television didn't come down the country really till about 65. That is true, but, but I mean, to build up to Eventually. the Because I remember, well, you see, we were... Can I say to you, very humbly, right. Pascal and I were very big yeah. the first few years of television. Right. But we were big stars in Dublin, and we were on own back in Limerick. That, that would be true. Because yeah. Limerick wasn't getting it at all. It wasn't getting it at all, yeah. That's right. Yeah. And you know where we saw ourselves? In, uh, and the former colleague here, J.C. Hickey. Yeah. We, we watched ourselves there. In, he, in William Street. We did, with the snow below, party. Just below McCarthy's shop. Below there. McCarthy's. That's right, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, it was exciting for you then selling television. Yeah, it was, yes. I had some very good years, and probably at this stage, I would like to say thanks to all the people who came and supported me over the 42 years, because without them, I wouldn't be here tonight, as you well know. All those people who came along supported me. You see, Vincent, that's a two-way thing. You were there to meet them when they came in personally, yeah, yeah. 
and you had a good follow-up. That's right, yeah. And if you said a person, I'll have your set up tonight or tomorrow, Sunday, you had it there. Yeah, that's And good. you had good uh, men backup around service. you, backup service. Yeah, I had very good staff most most times, you know. You had, but you had a good relationship with the public. Yeah. I really hope so. <laughs> My mother was very fond of you. Yeah, that's right, I remember the well. So she brought all her I did. I did. was up her house several times. You were indeed, and she loved Vincent yeah, Fendot. That's right. She said you were a grand boy. Oh. <laughs> but anyway, Finn, tell me this now. So you were there now. Well, what we know now, Vincent, is we'll, we'll take, take it by the scruff of yeah. the neck now. At the block now, I leave. I, I have my own memories, okay. but I leave most of it to you because okay. it is your night. You're the guest. Okay. You're the star of the show tonight. <laughs> apart from Darren, who's beaming at you over okay, there. Right. Vincent, at the corner there, now where you are on the right hand side, we're going to talk about a hundred yards only. Right, only, yes. Only. We'll start up over Tensley's, if you remember it. It's Tensley's. above me. Tensley's. That was a salt, uh, huge open door place with salt Importers. stacked importers, and that big blocks of salt. Big blocks of salt. I'm sure so. Some of the younger generation would ever have seen it. Big, like you see out in Siberia. Exactly. That's right. Big blocks of salt, Vincent. That's right. And a four-wheel, a four-wheel car, horse yeah. and car. Would, would bring it in, and unload and load. Unload. That's right. It was always waste outside it. It was, yes. We talk about right. the, 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 the what's happening at the moment. Yeah. You'll say, well, you'll be walking in inches of water. That's right. And do you know who's the head man there now, Vin? Uh, at that time, I don't, I don't know. I think you remember Tom yourself. I, 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 yeah. I can tell you who was. Yeah. I think he was manager. One of the Max Weenie men out in Ratchord. Right. He used to drive a bicycle. Good God, huh? Because cars were scarce then. At the time, yeah. But he, I think he was manager there in Tinsley's. Yeah, Max Weenie. I, I wouldn't remember that now. But no, no, but he was really. Yeah. Well, no, who was beside that, Mike? Beside uh, him was a, a butcher called uh, Mac Lachlan. Mac, a small uh, little place. That's right, a small place. And he's, he uh, sold it to Freddie Coffey. Freddie was his man. That's right. Freddie was buy his man. man. He's buying man. That's right. He was, yes. Freddie, Freddie drove the bike. That's right. And worked hard as and a butcher. As you know, Freddie died before his time, oh, I think, and he left a lovely lady widow. Oh, he married a lovely lady. Lovely lady. A very religious Green. lady. That's right. She lives in Catherine Street. That's right. Yeah. Lovely, lovely right. lady. Yeah. Okay, who was after that then? After that then was Nellie Woods. Nellie Woods. That's oh, right. Oh, sweet shop. Nellie Woods. And she did a great business there, a gro small grocer's, and you'd go in there in the morning and you'd give her a list and she'd have it all ready for you. And was she anything to Nellie Woods up in O'Connor, Eamon Martin's Woods? I, I don't know. JC no. Duggan? Uh, maybe, but I'm not sure. Nellie Woods? Yeah. I think she was. Her sister had a shop now across the road. Nobody Mrs. Nellie, O'Sullivan. Really, as my mother would call it, quality. That's right. <laughs> well spoken. And That's right. Salt of, salt salt of, of the earth. Tinsley salt of the earth. That's right. Yeah. Now, did you come next, Fred? I was next, number 50. And then uh, Sean and Neil was after me, which only retired. Oh, oh, no, hold on a I'm bit. going a bit fast. We want to, you're going a bit fast. Okay. Vincent, who were your colleagues when you started your shop? Then? Who gave you a hand? You mean what walking? What names can you think of? You mean walking for me? Yeah. Well, I mean, I had... I no, just to bring the memory back. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm not... I, I had a girl called Nora Collins, was my secretary there. She came from party, not side. Was Mary her sister and Sean O'Neill? That's right. Now you have it. She was shaking hands with Michael Nolan tonight in the Fine Gael rally on television. No, you saw that. I think she's a Fine Gael woman. Fine Gael woman. All right. But tell that's me, right. But, but that's right then. Yeah. Well, I, I had many, a lot of electricians working for me you at that have, time. I, I mean, I, I hate mentioning them all, but I, I, would, I would have several electricians. You've a good man there now, hadn't you? I Just have. recently. Yeah. Tony, uh, Tony Collins. Tony Collins. That's He's right. a good man. A great man. Yeah. A decent He's man. A, yeah. Very good man. And before him, I had Michael Quinn. I'm just going back a few there. Is that the man who went to RTE? With That's Brent, right. With and he lived above beside you. That's quite right. Brendan Fry. He lived up in uh, Janesboro. He did. Yeah, a great lad too. A grand young man. Grand young man, yeah. Well, now, Vin, yeah. we're at Vincent Van Oakens right. now. Who Vincent Van Oakens. That's right. Vincent, they're all sent to, to, to thinking outside now, and yeah. I'm speaking their minds. Right. What happens Vincent Van Oaken's business now? Well, the good news is, is it continues on in case people might be worried does about... Does it continue? It does, Under yes. the name? Uh, this, yeah, it's just changed to... I'll stay with the name. It's, it's the same name, yes, but my yeah. son-in-law has taken it over. And, and your daughter? And my daughter. And a lovely girl. She's, yes, she's teaching, isn't she? No, that's Valerie. She's right. Laura. Is the two lo you're real two, two lovely girls. girls. Two girls. Yeah. Yeah. But of course, then you had a lovely wife, hadn't you? I had, <laughs> if you say so. Ross <laughs> Bryan. That's right. Myra. Myra, lovely yes, girl. Okay. That's right. Now, Finn... Well, let's go down the road now. Come yeah. on. The next shop then was Sean O'Neill's. Sean M P S I. That's right. K 
chemist. And he was a great friend of mine. Uh, as a matter of fact, I miss him a lot because he was coming and giving me all the news about people who were dying and people about the golf and about the... But you had golf in between you, hadn't you? Well, Golfing no. was a big thing between you. Oh, it was a big thing, yes. Uh, Sean Needles played a lot of he, golf. He played with Limerick Golf Club. He did, yes. And I was Limerick Golf Club too, but we enjoyed ourselves. He's in happy retirement now. Oh, he is. He's, and he's, you know, Sean O'Neill was an, an awfully man. That's right. Awfully. And he was, a few years ago, under one in all Ireland, yeah. another man, he was like a little boy up there. He was, yes. And he played, I think, with Awfully uh, team when he was younger. He did. He was a very good hurler, that I know. Yeah. So, and he's a lovely wife, Anya. Anya, that's right. Right. Now, that's Sean O'Neill. Yeah. Who was besides... I mean, I know these things now, but I want the listeners yeah. to know. Beside Sean O'Neill was uh, Cowper's... Uh, they were... Uh, sorry, uh, Julius. Cowper. Cowper. And uh, he... C-O-W-P-R. That's right. Cowper. Cowper. They were in a lovely jewellery business. Uh, Small. Lovely man. He was. And repairs and all that type of thing. His son was lovely. That's right. Yeah. Very small little place there. Yeah, which is very... He did a lovely little business there. And now, years. he sold out in recent years. Yeah, and Jim McCormick bought the Sean and Eves and his place together. Oh, G- oh from, I have you. It's from Palace Green. Jim McCormick, a very nice uh, young man. Very nice young man. And doing a good business. Good business, yeah. Very good. Yeah, he's that's a great Jim, next door He's neighbor. from Palace Green. That's right. Yeah. Oh, good. A good lad. Jim McCormick, yeah. Jim McCormick. And now, continue. We're down out... Are still in upper th- well, the upper next stars. shop, the next shop, uh, was owned by uh, Ted Russell or Dan O'Connor. He owned that shop and used to have uh, flour and meal in there. I, I'm pretty sure that that is actually blank at the moment, there's nothing there at the moment. Well, no, I was talking to a chap during the week, right? Yeah, well, well to be correct, okay. yesterday, and I told him you were coming in, right? And I said I had difficulty about identifying one shop, right? And so, the little shop, say, there was beside Cowper, the yeah. jeweler, yeah. A man, well, the man, I must tell you the man's name, Michael Lynch, right. from Beach Grove Avenue up in Belna Corridor. Right. Sean, uh, Michael Lynch. Lynch. He worked in Halpin's long ago. Right. He told me that it was, you were right, that it was Dan O'Connor's yeah. seed, seeds. Seeds, that would be right now. And he had a very palatial egg entrance. That's right. But bricks and building and narrow. Yeah, that's right. Ted Seeds. Ted Russell. Ted man is still alive and a very healthy man. A, a lovely, lovely man. gentleman. That's right. One of He's nature's gentlemen. That's right. Still a great man. Oh, yeah. grand man. Yeah. Kind man. Yeah. Next to them then was, um, you might remember, O'Flynn's. Uh, Flynn's. They were from James Six Mile Bay. James O'Flynn, actually. Yeah. James O'Flynn. No relation to my man. No. That's right. James O'Flynn. Yeah. Gents Outfitters. That's right. That is the one. Oh, and he actually... The, the, I think old the, fashioned kind of like Yeah, there was a girl with your friends married to an Ignatius van Newcomb, who was a cousin of mine, but he wasn't a brother now, but a cousin of mine. Were they from the bridge? And Six Mile Bridge. They were, your friends were from. Oh, and he was from Carrick Parson. Well, no, a, a, a motley of young men worked in there. Desi Downs worked there. Yeah. Or he was in the pantomimes or something. South Bill Guy. He passed away only last year. Good heavens. There's a Richmond player, R- Desi Downs, yeah. and Donny Murphy, a tall young player who was in the Panthers, who died over in Luton in Bedfordshire. Good heavens. Donny Murphy. And Mick Crow worked there. Mick Crow, yeah. Yeah. Now, beyond that... Beyond that was... Um, uh, I'll tell you the name now in just a second. Uh, it was... Um, Can I help you? No, no. Uh, it was another um, haberdashery shop. Uh, stretches. Hardware. 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 Oh, he wouldn't like to think no, he no. buttons. No, just, no, no, no. Just hardware, you're right. Willie Stretch. Willie Stretch. From Clan La- Clan Lara. Exactly. A lovely man. That's the man. Brown coat. That's right. He all, uh, do you know who reminds me of him? Yeah. You know, I'm a great person. Uh, within myself, I say okay, great. Right, yes. For comparing faces. Do you remember that's a great friend of yours, you, you told me you saw him at the Palladium in London, as I did myself, uh, the two, the two Ronnies, oh, yes. Ronnie Barker. Yeah, Ronnie Barker. Tall man like Ronnie Barker, yes, yeah, the yeah. brown coat. That's right, yeah. The hardware shop. Yeah. He was there for many, many years, and I think he didn't retire at all, he just lived the way there. He, he lived up near the Mount. He did, yeah. And he's, I tell you who his father now was Father uh, Stretch out in Monard, out That's near it. your country. Tipperary. Tipperary. Yeah. God help us, Arthur Stretch. That's it. Father Arthur, he died young. Yeah. And Thomas in Canada, and the daughter is living as youthful as ever, doing her jogging every night, going out down the corner. That's great. Well done. But he was a lovely man. Nice man. Mr. Street. He was a customer of ours. Good, uh, he was. Yeah, yeah we'd send up, uh, we'd send up, hard, he'd send out for hardware stuff. Right. Yeah. But that was a very busy shop, and all the goods out in the street. That is true, yeah. That I remember, I remember the shop fairly well, but I mean, just a good business there. There was no doubt about it. Oh, yes. No. Next to him was Dan O'Connor's, the big shop. Oh, Dan at the corner. At the corner. Yeah. Dan O'Connor's. Yeah. 
bedroom where Dan comes where I do my shopping after my mother. Yeah. On the left in there, Vincent, yeah. was uh, I'm not preempting you now, but, no, no, no. but uh, I, I notice by your expression yes. when, you, when you're, because this is sprung on your audience. Uh, on the left was a baking shop. Inside? Yes, I do know who was there, Paddy Noonan, he died, but he was a, another Noonan is a very well known family. Food. Lovely family. Paddy Noonan was there for years and years. And, and, and the head man there was Mr. Carver. That's right. He that was, was a great name. man in the old IRA. Is that right, yes. And across from him then was the flower place. Yeah. And do you know who the headman there was? No. Johnny Murphy. Oh, yeah. He later became Sean O'Morocco in the GA circles. The John, yes. Uh, yeah. He writes books now, the John. He writes books that's now. The he does, that's, that's John. He was there. Sean O'Morocco he became now. That's right. Well, he was there. He was and right. a very nice man, the chap he was, too. That's right. Well, no, that was the end of that side, was it? That's the end of that side. Now, across the road. Across the road. No, without going down High Street. No, without, no, no. Across the road, and you had... Um, uh, it was a very Cuddy's. Can you remember that one? Cuddy's. Cuddy. Yeah. Cuddy's. A, a lovely old gentleman with a soft hat and exactly. a moustache. And a lovely lady. She was wearing and glasses. And it was so refined. That's right. Is it, what is it now, Ben? It's uh, uh, a computer internet shop now. Right. You know, you go in and you use computers there. Was it a Thai shop there? Who never done? It has everything like that, all those. And you just have a lot of um, uh, kind of religious. Uh, oh, like poly cars down in. Yeah. That type of stuff. That. It's, a, it's a fine shop, a good, good business. He was a lovely man. And they used to live overhead, the husband and wife. A yeah. very religious little couple. That's right, yeah. God. Now, by the way, Vincent, can I digress for a moment now? But I run a show here, Vincent, as you well know. Anything that comes into my head, I speak about it. Okay. I'm a devil for digressing. I was listening to the radio yesterday morning, and I heard a Limerick man, a man talking, who was in retirement with his wife, and some lady named Anne phoned in, and she praised men how hard-working we were, and all we do, and we're so... Ca- that married men are oh, right. oh, considerate, you see. Yeah. And she said, uh, she said, uh, and he says, thank you, Anne, said this man. I'm from Limerick myself. And he said his name was Dick Cuddy. Yeah. He might be a relation, I don't know. Well, yeah, but, but you can't put a finger on him, can I, I know, I can't. But he's really. a great golfing, yeah. golfing man. A great golfing man. Yeah. I, I don't know him, honestly. No. Well, no, Vincent, that, before we cross the road now, okay. Dan, before we cross the road now, what we'll do now is we'll have a little bit of music because Darren was so kind, he brought us in two glasses of refreshments. <laughs> Darren, will you put on there now? And do you know who I've picked for you? Right. A great old pal of yours and a neighbour of yours, Larry Kennedy. Oh, that's right, Larry, from Balinese. Well, no, I don't have Larry himself. No, you don't. No, I don't. No. But the song that he made very popular... Right. The old bog road. Right. And I'm playing this also for uh, Jerry and Teresa Mason in Bandacoda Western. So, first, this will give you a chance to have a drink okay. and we'll restock and we'll go from Cuddy's down to the end. Down the other side. Thanks, Here we go. Okay. Thank you. harvest morn but all oh, the ache that's in them for the spot where I was born my weary hands are blistered from working cold and heat and oh to swing aside again through fields of Irish wheat. But here am I on Broadway, a building bricks by law. When I'd sooner see.
lay beside her bed And the village church was crowded When the funeral mass was said But here am I on Broadway A building bricks by load When they carried her coffin Down the I take the day for what it's worth and do the best I can. Since no one cares a rush for me, what needs for me to moan? I go my way, I draw my pay and I smoke my pipe alone. Each human heart must know its grief, though little be its load. But God be with you, Ireland, and the Isle. Vincent Pinocchio, great, a uh, great uh, performer. You heard him many times. Oh yeah, I did. Thank you very much. <laughs> I, I, Joseph Lowe. Thank you very much. <laughs> what did I say? I said Vincent Pinocchio. Not me. I never sang oh, like I that. I went from you back. Oh, that's you did. Thank, thank you very no, much. No, Joseph Lock. Joseph. Yeah, Locke. we did a few tours with him, as you know, and we're also in the fridge. Yeah. You have the tape, haven't you? I have, yes. We're on the Cork Opera House. Cork Opera House. Yeah. Yeah. Vincent, we, uh, we had a lovely chat, though, down around the road, the old shops and the old characters and all the names and the people who worked in these various places. Yes, yeah. Now, we crossed the road and we dealt with Cuddihy's. We did, yes. Now, on Upper Wilmer Street, who was beyond Cuddihy's, Vincent? The Gale to Cleaners. Were they there then? They were, well, I, I'm not that sure, but they were there I'm for a long time. Either. You could be right, I'm not sure. No, there was an old shop was there. there. Yeah. Well, is the, it still a cleaners? Or no, no, it, it's it's sewing. Uh, no, it's not. It's a barber shop. No, that's all I know. It's a oh, barber. Oh, it's a barber it's shop. It is. Yeah. There's a barber there now. Oh. I, I don't even know the man, but he's there. Yeah. No. So that's vacant. Well, no. Beside that, Vincent, is a lane going down. That's right. At the side of no, the pub there is the arch, is it? Oh yes, the pub. Was O'Brien's that? owned the pub now, and before that, I think it was O'Connell's many years ago. Is that so? But this one, I'd, I'm not sure of, and I'd love if somebody could let us know. Some listener? Yeah, a listener might know who was in that pub, we'll say, 40 years ago. Beside, beside the arch, where beside, the arch is now. Where the arch is now. It's O'Brien's bar well, now. Right. Well, no, I, I, again, now, I'll bring you, Vincent, slightly off course now, right. but in context with the conversation. Right. There's a lane down there. There is. There was a family down there who carried on a very humble business of waste and scrap and iron and hardware Sorry. named Dunn. Dunn. They're still there. Are they still there? They're still there. Well, I must say this, Vincent, yeah. though, and I've been around yeah. the block many times. Yeah. They were the nicest Sweet. family you That's ever right. met. Yeah. Hard-working family. Right. Mrs. Dunn died there some years ago, but she was a lovely lady, and she has sons, and they're still carrying on that gentlemen. business. They're very nice fellows. One of them is a, is a great musician. That's right. Yeah. He plays the banjo, and his, his CDs are over the world selling. Oh but is Mr. Dunn still alive? I don't think so. Both. Mrs. Dunn died about five, four or five years ago, but well, I can tell you this much, she was some lady, a lovely woman. And and the father the, the father wore a soft hat. That's right, yeah. And and, uh, and what I loved about them was they were so affectionate. The three or four sons there uh, yeah. were grown men. Had they all worked together and they went to all their affairs and things like that. Yeah. And the girls. Yeah. But they were, you, you'd say to yourself that going back several generations, maybe centuries, yeah. 
There was no ability there. No, I'm, no that's a compliment to pay, but I, I hope some of the relatives are listening. What a lovely family. Lovely family. So you know them? They're, they live up now in, uh, not too far away from the Spotted Dog. They live up there now. Did, well, they were Down the road, yeah. So you knew them? I knew them well, yes. I know the sons well, too. They come, just come into me last night. Oh, that nice. Great friends, well. Right, now, Vin, we're waiting maybe for somebody to phone in Darren at 3195.95. Tell us what pub was there before O'Brien's. I think it was O'Connell's, but I'm not sure. Uh. Right. Now, after that, then, you had Murphy's. Do you remember that? And, uh, they were from... Um, the Limerick Woolen Company. Well, that's the one. Limerick Woolen Company. Murphy. Mr. and Mrs. Murphy. She was from, I think, out on Maru, and I'm not too sure where he was from. But they were she was up in the office. That's right. And he used to do the business. And he did the business, and he always smoked a pipe. That's the man. He wore a soft hat too. A soft hat, that's and it. he never had a pipe out of his mouth. That's the man. <laughs> and you know what was in that shop? And as a child... Yeah. My mother is going there for short pants for us, you know, short right. pants. Yeah. We were kids. And I just love to go in there. Do you know why? Yeah. I'd watch Mr. Murphy putting the money into a little yoke that he screwed in, right. hold the handle. No, it, it, you know, if he walked four paces, he could hand it up to her. Right. No, he the had system. to do the orthodox thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Put in the thing, put in the docket, That's right. sign the docket, screw it, Full it hold it, an option. Right. Yep. Yeah. That was like going to cost the Swiss yeah. Alps. That's right. As a child to yeah. me. Yeah. And she above then would take it out with her spectacles on, give him the chair, pull the chair, and, and back down again. <laughs> back again. He would open it and check it. That's right. Re he could have walked up with it, you know. Yeah, I did, but that was the system, wasn't it? Oh. I, I remember E.G. Fitz and a lot of oh, shops. Spades had, had them. Spades had them. Uh, McMahon's. They had them. Yeah, that's true. And Newsom's. Newsom's. But of course, they had reason that they miles away. They were long distance, yeah. But Vincent, I'm going to ask you now, do you recall the two gentlemen assistants he had? I, I don't I don't think so. I can't recall them. But I think you know who they were. I do. Yeah. You see in my eyes. Right. I'm, a, a lovely chap called Bernard. Right. Bernard, who was his Oh, I, I remember him. No. I remember him. No. I, I remember him. I'm evoking a few memories there. No. He was, Bernard, yes. Bernard, very, yeah. he was awfully, very, yeah. very well spoken. That's right, yes, him. Yeah. And, and, and very, very Always nice. wore a lovely suit on him all the time. Spoken. That's right. And, and, and he, he, was, he was so nice when you're good to him. If Bernard. he's listening now, he says, <laughs> do a, a, a mimicry of him. Yeah, but I, I do it with, 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 with uh, Respect. affection. Uh, of course you do. And then, how was the other chapter? A nice, good looking young man there, very jolly. Uh, Dominic. Dominic, I don't remember him. No, I often meet Dominic. Dominic now is a, has a business of his own. Right. And he's also very precise. Because it was a very old-fashioned shop, wasn't it? It was, actually, yes. Yeah. Darkened and old style. That's right. And a big long counter. Big long counter. No, that was the Limerick Woolen Company. Yeah. After that, I think it's a fellow by the name of Good. Do you remember him? Good. G-W-O-D-E. Well, no, I know a man named Good, but I don't think he... His name was Billy Good. Yeah. He used to often dress up as a lady... For, yeah. a, for a fun, for a pan yeah. concert. Yeah. Billy Good. He was a pre a pre a pre man. I always said to uh, to to that uh, Leo Shine. I, I understand. Those yeah. chappies, yeah. Mr. Shimmers. Yeah. Who stood that? But he stood, and he was very good. Right. Yeah, good. <laughs> good. He was very good. <laughs> no pun intended. Okay. Billy Good. Yeah. Billy be good. And I, I don't know that he emigrated to England. Someone may know something about Billy Good and tell us. Yeah. But the shop good, what are you talking about there? They, he used to have bicycles and, and things like that, but he was a very kind of a genius of a man. I know he was very into technical things, you know. Into bicycle? Well, I won't say bicycles, but he was his, his, his equipment. And I, th I think, no, and I say this again with right. affection, I think he was a, a, an eccentric. Yeah. Because... I'm not sure, I'm sure there are people out there now who may have a better memory than me, yeah. or maybe more enlightened yeah. and younger. But I think at one stage he 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 he, he, he convinced himself that he was Marconi. <laughs> maybe yes. Because he yeah. used to drive a bicycle, isn't he? That's right. That is true, yeah. And he'd have a bicycle he'd have a cha he'd have all, uh, wires and tubes yeah. and valves on his bicycle. Yeah. I think he perceived within himself that he was uh, Mr. Marconi. Maybe, yeah. He was, say that I know, and he used to only open his shop certain days of the week, that I remember too. Yeah, he was, yeah, yeah, uh, very, yeah, uh, yeah, very, very, uh, one might say odd. That's right. Yeah. But uh, Somebody might know about him, no, I, I'm not Someone might tell us about Mr. Yeah. Good. Next was O'Sullivan's, that was a sweet shop, and Eddie Wood's his sister. Well, Vincent, yeah. before that, had was you it Barry the Butcher? Oh, sorry, apologies. Uh, you're right. You know, I, I missed one there, Barry the Butcher. And Barry the Butcher. Yeah. And it was, it was the, it, it wouldn't be accepted today. No. 
Oh, an open butcher shop. Yeah. yeah. With yeah, your glass yeah, door. Glass door. Oh, yes, yes, yes. With Mr. Barry, a lovely man. That's right. Who's so till. Yes, yes. Is that what the fasting now is? No, that the is fast, where... No, no, you're office. meant to go over that place. Uh, uh, Michael McLaughlin. Or Michael O'Loughlin. In recent years. Oh, yeah, recent years, yeah. No, but before, before him there was another man there. Another nice man from Balnacorra side. But when the Barrys had it, it was an open butcher shop. Yeah. Which meant there was no door. You walked off with all the sawdust in the ground. I see, yeah. And butchers were always scrubbing their wooden... T- yeah. Which they do Tables. today. They do today, yes. But Mr. Barry was there a white coat and his son. That's right. And two very nice people, weren't they? They were, they were very nice people. That's true. And the other lad that was with Barry's is still there. I'm not too sure if he's there, but he's still is there. He? He is there, still there. God bless him. Yes, well, well, who was next to Barry the Mr. most? Mr. I missed one there. O'Sullivan's was a sweet shop. Mrs. Nelly Woods' sister. Billy Vincent, I'm sorry to say no, it. I'm missing another one. I'm sorry to say this to you, Open. Right. Because, I'll tell you why. You are leaving out... Jack Brosnan. Jackie Brosnan. Okay. Now, before we talk about Jackie Brosnan... Yeah. Here, uh, Darren is after the a few messages that came in on the computer. Okay. The pub was owned by the late Dennis O'Connell. Man in the corner. Top of the class for you, Vincent. Yeah, I, I know it's O'Connell, yeah. He also had a butter place for trading in Upper Gerald Griffin Street. I didn't know that place, yeah. Mr. O- Dennis O'Connell. So that cell that he had a place uh, 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 for uh, making butter, trading in butter in Upper Gerald Vincent. Vincent, top of the class. Right, now we'll see what the next question says. Tinsley, yeah. Tinsley's, Mr. Tinsley was mayor of Limerick at the time of the planting of the treaty stone. Good heavens, sir. Of the planting. Of the treaty stone. Is that suggesting that it will be made by the, by the message I've here? Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, it was hardly, hardly, hardly <laughs> during the, no. the, the, the Tracy storm. No. And now, I'll repeat that now again. Yeah. Mr. Tinsley was mayor of Limerick at the time of the planting of the Tracy stone, which had been built, the Tracy right. stone. Yeah. And thank you to that listener also. Another message says, Mary Bork Corcoran wishes Vincent well. Good. Now, who is Mary Bork Vincent? I'm not that sure, though. I'll tell you who she is, though. She was Mary who worked in Sean O'Neill's. Oh, right. Yeah. We spoke about the girl that who was there. Oh, the Nora, yeah, Nora and Mary. Mary, Mary Cochran. Mary Cochran. In Sean O'Neill's. In Co- oh, oh, she's now Mrs. Cochran. Wishes Vincent well. So you thank her yourself. Thank you very much, Mary. Appreciate yes. that. And Darren says here, uh, many more do too. Many more phoned in, Vincent. Okay, thank I you. suppose the line is jammed outside, and a lot of people like to let us talk away okay. and recording the memories, and they won't want to interrupt. That's very nice. Thank you to the, those uh, people who sent in those messages. Jackie Brass. Jackie Brass. So sure, Jackie was the top business. No disrespect to Fanukas. Right, okay. But he was he was years before you. He was yes. Jackie Brass was an institution in Limerick, and the shop was. It was, yes. He it records. was it was only a quarter of the size of your shop. That's right, yeah. No little shop though. A little dinky dirty shop. That's right. And Jackie was there forever smoking. Yeah. Top man in the Boy Scouts. He was, yes. No. The Bros well, the Bros Brosnan family were here there. I, I, I don't know that so much. He was there when I when well, I there was came Jim in. anyway. Yeah. Who was the bicycle Jim. mechanic. Right. He repaired the bicycles in the back. Jack was in the front of the shop. Yeah. Then there was another brother there. Called, he had, he 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 was a, a, a solicitor's clerk with Gaffney, the solicitor's knock on the He founded, ran, and produced and directed Bras and his Mandoliers. Good heavens! There was a uh, limit. There was playing the Sunday concert as well before your time, I before see. my I time. Yeah. Bras and his Mandoliers, and he was the music director. Bras, and like his brothers, they all smoked. Heavily. Yeah. Heavily. He was clerk above. And I tell you who, Mr. Uh, who, yeah. well, forget his name now, Brosnan. He was the, the uh, uh, solicitor's clerk. He he married Dan Bork's daughter. Good. Or granddaughter. Right. Gavin, up near Tate's clerk. Clark. He was a lovely man. Yeah. And then there was a lovely lady there, a girl behind the counter, Mamie. Do you remember Mamie? She was forever smoking. 
Is that right? I don't remember him. The August. four of them yeah. smoked, smoked yeah. heavily. Yeah. Mamie Brosnan married a lovely man named Mulcahy, who died only last year. Six months ago, he only died. And I'll tell you where Mr. Mulcahy, uh, he, a, a lovely man, up to, the, up to the end of his life, he was in the newspaper business. Right. But when I was a child, which is not today nor yesterday, my mother would send me down for tea and sugar to the home and colonial, which was at the top of William Street. Yes. I remember the name now well. Near yeah. Barry, yeah. The, the vegetable shop there, right. Jim Barry. Right. Do you remember? Well, I remember the name well now, but I yeah. don't remember the, the home and colonial. Yeah. Well, then they went later over to the other side. Right. Alongside Liam Sullivan's, the leather merchants. Yeah. Do you recall him there? You do on the left? I, I do, yes. In recent years. I do, yeah. With, with the home and colonial, I'll tell you who worked in the home and colonial now, with Mr. Mulcahy, was Pat Lynch. No, Pat Lynch. Out in Castle Troy. Out in Castle Troy. He hurled, he, he played in goal for Limerick in football. Yeah. A very nice chap. He worked yeah. in Boyd's afterwards. Then he comes on the radio quite often. Is that the man? Well, no. On Limerick when radio. Come on. Well, if that's the same man I know now, this uh, he walked in Boyd's. Is he? Well, of course I don't be listening. Boyd's. I don't be listening every night. No, it's just no. this program. Out, or, I do or, be out, Gallivant. No, he has come on several times on the radio. Has he? He's even out in the double road. He's married to a lady named John. I think so. Yeah. She worked in Todd's. Yes, right. He walked in Boyd's. He walked in Boyd's. I know the man well. Well, back to Mr. Jackie Brosnan. Yeah. Any day you went up to the shop when Jackie was scout master of St. Joseph's, it was a, an open house for the Boy Scouts. Do you know who worked there now, by the way? No. Frank McCourt. Yeah, the, the, the real Frank McCourt, yes. The real Frank McCourt. Good Will yeah. the real Frank McCourt stand up? Yeah. Frank McCourt. I remember, I remember one day I was above in Loney's. Right. My mother used to send me for the message. Yeah. And Tom O'Donnell met me. Now, who is Tom O'Donnell? My namesake. The TD. Oh. No, 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 no before that. Okay. There Tom O'Donnell was in heaven then. Right. No, he was Tom O'Donnell. He played with young monsters. He became an accountant right. with that religious order down in Forza, down in uh, in uh, in Cork, Cork City. City. Cork, Cork City, yes. He di- actually he died only a few months ago. Right. Tom O'Donnell. And Tom says to me, Tom says to me, there's a great record selling below Jackie Brazos. That's why we did things in those days. Like, time, yes. With no sophistication yeah. of mobile phones. No, no, no. no, no. It was word of mouth. Yeah. He said, a fella called Brendan O'Dowda. Yeah. O'Dowda, how's it? I was thinking of a dude, a dude. <laughs> yes. You know, and he said, so I went down to Brosnan's and I bought a record for, I think it was ninepence. <laughs> no. off, off of a, 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 a tall young flame side, McCourt. He was Jackie Brosnan's assistant. Right. Jackie had two assistants. He had a fellow called Noble. That's a very noble name, isn't yes, it? It is indeed. From, uh, yeah. from uh, Ross Brinder. Right. Joe Noble. A very nice fellow. I think Joe Noble and Jackie and uh, Frank McCourt were assistants to Jackie Brosnan. He had a very thriving business there. Oh, yeah, yes, with no doubt about that. I mean, he used to play the most modern records and you go in and he played for you. Well, they were modern of their day. Well, of their day, yes. And who was the famous stars who was becoming out there? The McNulty family. Oh, yeah. <coughs> and you know what you sing? Yeah. Jim Moshe was cast away upon a dilly dad. Uh, so we'll get up out of that, you ain't put a breath in that Mrs. Maguire said now. Did Lee, light, 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 light. Was that it? Yes, yes, sir, yeah. So down I went and I bought Brendan Osh. Ododa. Oh, Ododa. Ododa. And he's singing La Galandrina or whatever. The Swallow. Yeah. And I bought it off of, off of a court. Yeah. And I paid Jack, I think it was ninepence. But McCourt was there before he went to America. Yeah. No, and John Noble was there. No, Jackie's big business, Vincent, I, you should know all this, yeah. was the wet battery, the dry battery. That's right, yeah. Yeah, the, the radio with the wet battery and the dry battery. Exactly. Yeah. And believe he had the biggest trade in Limerick. And when there'd be a monster hurling match on, there'd be a queue outside Jackie Brasdahan's with their batteries <laughs> on their bicycles in prams and on wheelchairs and on scooters to get the matches no to, to bring to, yes yeah, to get the matches the to follow on there so Jackie would have the place full and Jim up the shelves on the roof out in the back up in the yard up the chimney he had batteries being serviced yeah. for me hard or hair on Sunday Oh. Incidentally, Vincent, can I digress here? Okay. Tomorrow night at 7 o'clock on RT1, there's a great tribute to Michal O'Hare. Good. Don't miss it. He's a You'll great. Be, I, I, I'll, I'll watch that. Being a sportsman. Yeah, I'll watch that. But anyway, as I was saying, uh, 
Do you know how much your battery was? Sixpence. Sixpence. Sixpence to get a refill. Yeah. No, in addition to that, no. I was, I suppose... Oh, he's a lovely, lovely guy, lad, yeah. He, and just, he was there for many years. Lovely, no, nice, lovely family, I That's know. right, yeah. They're out in Fenimore there, aren't they? That's, that's history. And one of them is in a band. He, he plays a guitar. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Well, had you much to do with Jackie across the road? Well, I, I, I would say that every day I would meet him and have a chat with him, and he was a very, very nice man, and, and there's no doubt about it. He was a great neighbour to have, you know, come over. And, and who was always in there chatting over the counter? Neddy Donnelly. Oh, yeah. The meat man, yes, yeah. himself in India, and Joe Murphy. Yeah. They, they, they used to do the makeup in the concerts right. and the shows. Yeah. Joe was a wine salesman with whites above in Glentel Street. Oh, yeah. But the, you know, the Willie, Willie O'Loughlin, the scout, yeah. and John Joe Crone, and all the scout gang. Yeah. It was a, a day in, in myself, yeah. and myself. Yeah. It was a lovely place. Yes, to call into, yeah. And, and, uh, and the music coming out, coming yeah. out. There, he used to have the music on the street. He used to have the music on the street. He used to, yeah. yeah. That's right, yeah. Well, I always tell a story about him. The day before I got married, no, two or three days before I got married, he kept on playing, you, uh, he's getting married in the morning. You know, well, you're getting married. My fair lady. Yeah, he kept on playing that, and you. I couldn't be seen outside the door. I had to be hiding inside. But he was a lovely man, you know. He was. Jackie Brosnan. I'll tell you about Jackie Brosnan, will I? Yeah. Yeah. Jackie Brosnan was the first... I ever saw in my theatrical life from watching and partaking miming right? we used to have a scout rally every year right. and we had one rally in the hall below on St. Charles Square which is now the funeral undertakers right. crosses yep another one and we had Jim I think J.C. Dogan or Jim O'Dwyer were the bosses of it right Jackie Brosnan put on a mime it was very clever now I'd never seen a mime because I don't... Uh, Crows and O'Dea yeah. were, were hardly coming to Limerick that time. Yeah. You know, they hadn't yeah. made cracked into uh, Limerick yet. Yeah. And he would do a mime, huh? He did a mime. Yeah. And he had three fellas... Listen to this now closely. Yeah. He had three fellas playing a banjo or fiddle. Yeah. One sitting down and two standing. And they were, and they were playing... Uh, I think they were playing. Jim Moshe was cast away. That's what they were playing, actually. That's the one I mentioned a while ago. Yeah. And they were doing a mime. Now, I saw the greatest world mimers doing it. The two the Clark brothers in the Palladium in London. Yeah. And there were all these guys. And, as you know, Pascal and I chanced on Adam too, doing, sisters, we were never such devoted. Sisters. That but how's that? We're getting back. And you know who the three mimers were? Yeah. The guys playing it. Yeah. Now, every one of us in the hall, which held about 300, it's now an undertaker's uh, yeah. parlour. Right. We all thought that these three fellas were playing away, and we couldn't get over it. Young fellas about 14 or 15 could play so well. Right. We were dumbfounded. And I was in the back of the hall, and I was like, I, I, we were all dumbfounded. Do you know who the three were? No. Des Kennedy, who oh, he's yeah. the car man. I know, he's up in Gary Owen. Engineer. That's an engineer, I know him, yeah. Des, Des Kennedy. Kennedy. Yeah. We just called him Smiler right. in the scout days. Okay. For a very good reason. He was always smiling. Yeah. That lovely. Yeah. Then, the middle man was, was Frank McCourt. He <laughs> turned up everywhere. He did. The middle man. The middle, <laughs> man. The middle man. Right. Frank McCourt was the second man, Kennedy, and the third man was a fella called, I think, Georgie Wright, W-R-I-G-H-T. And I would love to know whatever became of George Rice, right. mm. because I haven't met him in X number of years. Yeah. Somebody might know where he my is. My phone tell, in tells it 319595. Yeah. If you have any comments to make, ladies and gentlemen, phone in Darren at 319595, and we had several already, and Darren is outside taking more. Any comments to make? But Vincent, haven't we covered Jackie well now? We have, well, he was a great character. There's only one PS I must admit to it. Darren. Right. Jackie only died last year. That's right. And I'm sorry to say that whoever arranged his obsequies and so forth, they did them rather quickly. Because I said to all my colleagues, Donald Brock and right. all the boys, all the former scouts, yeah. that when God would call Jackie, yeah. we heard he was in the will, that we'd give him a great send-off. Scouts right. turn out in uniform. Uh, we, have, we were planning a guard of honour, right. the hearse. That a few of us would carry the coffin. Yeah. And it all never happened. It went so fast. 
it, his relatives, yeah. or whoever it was, yeah. did it too fast. Yeah. I know the list, I know. But we would pay the... He had a big funeral down St. John's, I was there the same day. Yeah, big crowd, you were there. Uh, I think I met you there. Uh, That's right, yeah. Jackie Brown, yeah. the man who introduced miming to Limerick. That's right, yeah. There you are. Now, next to him, we'll move along to the next one. I, if you remember, it was Jim Marshall. Jim Marshall had a, a shop there. Vincent, I hate the country. I'm, I'm sorry, no, I know it is. Mrs. Wheeler. Miss? No! No, a little shop that called Nelly Woods, the, the no. second. Small little sweet shop. No, that was, that was O'Sullivan's. Nelly Woods was at my side. Yeah, well, well, Mrs. well she was a sister of Nelly Woods. She was, that's right, yeah. But and a little girl walked in there, a lovely little girl walked in there named Tobin. Right. Pretty little girl. She died l last year. She married Buckley, who also passed away in the leader office. Oh, chairman of the Limerick leader. A lovely little girl. Yeah. And that was a lovely little shop there. Yes, now you're coming to your home talk. Uh, Mrs. Whelan. Billy Whelan's mother. And I mean, um, Billy of Riverdance. Billy of Riverdance, that's right. And Mrs. Whelan lived up in um, Barrington Street. And she was uh, married to David Whelan. She was uh, Irish. What name was over the door? Dahi O'Whelan. You spent all your years. I did look at it across the Dahi O'Whelan. Dahi O'Whelan. O'Whelan, that's it. You know that he was a great uh, nationalist too. He was, yes. He was some gentleman. That man was a Lovely very nice man, man. and yeah. a pretty quiet man. Yeah. Mrs. Whelan was not so quiet. Well, I don't. She was a bit of a character, like you know. She was. Uh, yeah. She was. Yeah. No, when I say she wasn't so quiet. She had a lovely house up in Barrington Street, oh. and, and, she, yeah, and Billy used to. Oh, sure. Just there, he started off his oh, music. Sure. He had an organ there. Yes, that right. would do credit to the Savoy. Exactly. Billy, I remember in the pram. Do you? I do, and at and. Uh, when our famous show that started us off, as you know well, in the yeah. mechanics, right. I had Billy inside selling programs and selling raffle tickets. Good. And the mother gave out to me years after. Yeah. My son, I spent a lot of money, she says, <laughs> in making a barrister out of him. Yes. And he was caught in the bar and he turned it down to play in a dingy old fourth-rate pub above in Dublin. Thanks to Tom O'Donnell, she says. I That's what you did to my son, she says. <laughs> because I gave him the love for music. Yeah, yeah. He became very famous, didn't he? Oh, sure. So, and he's, and he's getting the freedom of Limerick now, I think, he, and the 16th of March. He's entitled yeah. to 16th of March. He's entitled yeah. after the success yeah. of Riverdance. That's right. But anyway... Uh, where are we? Where are we at? We're, we're, we're definitely going to Jim Marshall's now. Jim Marshall's is a small shop across the road, but the bank has taken that place over now. Okay, but before, but staying at Jim Marshall now. Yeah. Jim Marshall knows the seeds. That's right. No, Jim Marshall walked in spades. Walked in spades with yeah. Tom Frost. That's right. And Joe Ryan. Yeah. Oh, the locksmith. Where Jackie Brown's is Yeah, now? that's William Ryan and Joe. William's father. That's right. They all walked in spades. That's it. Yeah. Uh, wait a minute, we want to talk. Oh, thank you, Darren, you're a gentleman. Oh, you, Darren, you're kept busy. Vincent, I'll read out a few more cards that came All in. Right. <laughs> One second, I want to find my specs. There we are. Uh, does Vincent remember his days? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I should read this. Don't. No, you didn't worry, you didn't worry, you didn't worry. <laughs> no, she's a kindly heart. Oh, okay. Does Vincent remember his days working in the hospital when all the girls fancied him? Oh, my hey! God. <laughs> <laughs> there you are, there in black and white. Does Vincent remember his days working in the hospital when all the girls fancied him? That's very now, nice. tell us, what hospital? I don't really know. You were asked equipment during the lectures. <laughs> when I used to, uh, was, I, was, I remember working in St. John's and out in St. Camilla's Hospital and uh, St. George's Hospital, I could go on for... Did you know the... you had a ladies' fan club? I don't think it's... I'm completely <laughs> unaware of it. That's well, good. Well, no, I hope Mrs. Finocan is listening. Actually, no. doesn't mind. I know the good man she got. Okay. No, that's right, no. That's you, Vincent Delbert. Okay. Now, Mr. Good yeah. moved to Castle Connell. I didn't know that. Go ahead, no, yes. He bought the castle grounds there from a lady called Rachel Hartigan. Or oh, that would be Stan DeLacy's daughter-in-law. Right. He went on to marry her. Oh, holy heavens. She celebrates her 100th birthday this year. No, I'll read that again, will I? Yeah. Mr. Good, yeah. the man at the bicycle shop, moved to Castle Connell. He bought the castle grounds there from a lady called Rachel Hartigan. He went on to marry her. That's Rachel Hartigan. Right. Mrs. Hartigan, Mr. Good, it would appear, has passed on. Yes. Mrs. Hartigan celebrates her 100th birthday this year. 
Well, you want to send her congratulations, well, Winston, we'll have to go out and visit her. We will, yes. And have a few words with her. Wonderful. Well, the call, well, both callers, including the girls in the hospital, <laughs> thank you very much. You brightened up my, my interview here with Vincent. Right. Willie Brosnan's wife is still alive, living in Drumbana. A lady bought her first radio for fifteen pounds and delivered it to her. Well, but this is probably another story. Right. So we've two misters here, Vincent. Yeah. Willie Brosnan's wife is still alive and living in Dora. Delighted, congratulations that you're still with us all, Mrs. Brosnan. Great. That's Will now. A lady now another lady phoned in and said she bought her first radio for fifteen pounds, delivered to her by bicycle. Delivered by bicycle. bicycle. <laughs> I wonder who she's from. Did you know her? I don't think so. <laughs> no, you had a van, did you? I had, some Actually, you had a van. I had a van. You had a beef and oaken. That's right. Yeah. I remember well. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Beef and oaken. Now, that's nice, isn't it? Two that's nice some. messages. Okay. Another message now is, the Michael, the Michael O'Hare documentary is on RTE radio, not TV. On the radio. Okay. Well, correct. No, I, I miss. I missed. I know it is radio. Yeah. I, sorry, I misdirected that to you. What I should have said there was on Radio One. Right. RT One tonight, tomorrow night, th tonight at seven, Sunday. Sunday night. You might. And thank you to the kind person, because my Hano here, we'd all want to and record it for posterity. Yeah. A lovely gentleman, right. my Hano. And thank you to the caller for giving me that information. So it's on radio, we'll be listening to me hall. Ballo ye arev galera car de gael. Now, Frankie Whelan from Doon says he worked with W.H. Stritch on him as a messenger boy in 1939. Good heavens. I, I know Frankie Whelan. You do. I, the I Stone's think, uh, king. He, he is a he is a ornament outside in his house in Doon. Is that the man? He, he was in America. He has a small industry going. He has, yeah. He I makes know the small. Man. I know the man well. And he's an expert on the spoons. Uh, yes, right. And he was a great supporter of Fairview Red. And he married a lovely lady called Margaret. Lovely. And he Frank, worked with sorry? stitches. Sorry? He worked He worked as, as a messenger boy. Good heavens. We should most of those messenger boys grew up right. to be tycoons and businessmen, didn't they? They did. They mightn't admit it now, but they did. But Mr. Whelan does. Yeah. yeah. I know the man well. I Millionaire though he is, he doesn't mind telling no, us all. He doesn't mind. <laughs> Uh, Frankie knows what I can say about. Thank you, Frankie, for your very nice message. Now, that's that's one, two. We got five messages there now, and thank to all of you who sent them in. If you have any comment to make while Vincent Perrokin is with me, uh, three one ninety five ninety five and outside Limerick yeah. 061. Vincent, that, you you said Marshall there now, didn't you? I did, Jim Marshall. Yes. Well, now I tell you about about Jim Marshall now. You know him as a neighbour and as a, a season king. That's right. I was, when I worked in Flins and Cardin Market Row, you know, with Willie Frone and... I do, uh, yes. A few more head cases. I walked up. <laughs> I walked up one day and Jimmy Marsh... I know Jimmy yeah. uh, about the films. Jimmy and Jimmy Carroll yeah. were on a touring cinema. J.A.O. Carroll. J.A.O. Carroll. That's right. I remember that. A man who was very generous to me with some Sorry. of his tapes, by the way. Jimmy Carroll and, 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 and Jimmy Marshall were touring around showing films out in, in the small halls, yeah. including your area, yeah. McCarr, Max Hall. In Carrick and Leash. In Carrick and Leash. That's right, they were. I remember it years ago. I do, I do. I remember it. So I walked up one day, and after getting my paper from the Irish press, my father was a de Valera man, the right. Irish press. You were judging in those days what paper you bought, you know. Right. <laughs> Peter Father, Peter Gale, or whatever. So I used to buy the paper for my father, and most days of the week I was, I'd bring Pop a pack of the fags, a pack of the... He loved players, players, please. Ten players, every day. Poor old Pop. Anyway, one day I went up, and Jimmy Master says to me, as proud as a peacock. Tom O'Donnelly says to me, what do you think of that? There was a man up in the court, Joe Dillon, he was a painter. Right. He was painting up churches. And he painting out, over the door of this shop, J.F. Marshall. Yeah. And Jimmy, fair play to him, yeah. win gold and wear it. He stood back and he says, Tom O'Donnell, what do you think of that, he says to me. Yes. God has gone, Jimmy, so you're starting out your own. I am, Tom, he says. But Jim, does anyone think about it that I'm like... He stood back at me, most indignantly. What, Tommy says to me? People will be asking, who is J.F. Marshall? You're known to all and sundry, says I. As Jim. Jim Marshall. It was to you. Yeah. And he says, huh. And he walked away. <laughs> when I walked, when I went past up at six o'clock, getting the limerick leader for Pop, 
Jim, 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 about about the bank. What do you remember the bank? Well, I mean, the, the memory I have of the bank was Percy O'Kennedy. You might remember Percy, well. I do, Percy. He and died I mean, only last he, year. Last year, and he was some character. But everybody knew Percy O'Kennedy. And um, I, I always remember uh, jumping from there, just across the road, overhead, Loch Nans on oh, the butchers. Oh, you to know. You do. Uh, the famous John the Man. John the Man for me. Yeah, because he was there all during my time. Radio Limney. That's right. And um, I tell one little story about him. We had a lad in the shop, Michael Quinn, and, and many, many elderly people just come in with their radios, and they would say to Michael, put in four batteries or two batteries into that, tele into that radio and just leave it on John the Man's program because they were able to get the dates and they were able to get the news. and the, That's all they wanted. And, I mean, I'm talking about several hundred people just do that. They want to know the station, only John the Man. John the Man. That's right. He was some character, you he know. He was. He was. You know and who will ever forget himself and Walter and the making the Christmas exactly. cake? Exactly. Yeah, Walter. Or when the Ross Talton passed through and his head out of the window yeah. and he gave a better commentary than Des Cahill. He would be, yes. Out to the window yeah. of the, the radio. Yeah. Well, Vincent Tanookin, we we covered only a hundred yards. That's all. But as I said, yeah. Dan, when I arrived tonight, a hundred yards of history, a of history. social history. Yeah. And you can see the response. You know, people yeah. sending in messages. They're all listening outside tonight. Yeah, oh, yes, which is wonderful. I, I'm delighted to hear about Good and about the other, the other public, and I wasn't sure about that. O'Connell. That was yeah. the man. Yeah. But you had many happy years along there. Oh, I had a wonderful time up there. See what I say? I mean, they were great neighbours. And I want to say one thing. Up to now, there's still lovely people up there. I mean, all the shops up there at the moment, ah, yeah. there's, uh, there's, a, there's a, every type of shop up there. There's like, you know, and there's banks there, as you know. That old Lachlan chap you mentioned, Michael yeah. the Butcher. Michael. The old fashioned butcher. They're all there now. And uh, William Ryan, I mean. Oh, uh, William and his, the and his, yes. Father Ryan. Father, Father Damien out in Cork. Corbally. That's right, Father Damon and Corby. But, uh, you know, they're, they're very, very nice people, neighbours. There's a couple of charity shops here, and there have been men by very nice people, too. Yeah. You know, uh, oh, they are. That lady from Castle Connell, yeah. uh, she's managed the rest of That's right. But it was a little village of its own, wasn't it, in those days? It was, yes. And then, uh, every village, shop, like, yeah. for, for, you know, for yeah. a few, you all knew each other. Exactly. And you were always borrowing cha yeah. change and change and Ex that type of thing. newspapers. Yeah. And you ran out we we still do that, which is wonderful, you know. Shopping bags, yeah. you? Things like that, which was wonderful. And I mean, that's what I, I, I would. I was very upset when I leave in the place. But like sooner or later, you have to go after forty-two ah, years. Ah, well, Vincent, there's, yeah. there's, 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 there's a lot of miles left in your still. <laughs> Maybe yes. And you're going to enjoy it. I will. Yes. With your, with your, with your, uh, with hobbies. your golf yeah. and your magic. That's right, oh, the yes. magic on It's well. going very well. Yes. I was in actually last week. I was in a Blackpool. There was a conference on there, oh, really? and they did exactly. Uh, in hell, ben? It's in Blackpool. Where? And your friend, uh, we saw him there. Ken Dodd. He was on. Ken. Uh, yes, old pal. he was on in the, on the big theatre there in Winter Gardens. Is he a wonderful comedy? Wonderful. But he was only on about 10 or 15 minutes, which was oh, very what, good. What an artist. Wonderful artist. What yeah. an artist. Great character. Well, Vincent Pinocchio, now listen, we've covered all the trading houses. <laughs> Darren, if you're listening, if you have any more messages, you know, bring them in to me, because I want to go to another topic. Vincent, we still have a few minutes left. Right. We've gone over a few minutes over tonight to, to celebrate your, <laughs> your visit. Yeah, it is. Because... Uh, because uh, <laughs> We're going a few minutes extra. <laughs> oh, my God, he has a bundle of papers under his arm. Darren, do you know what it is? You're, you're working very hard tonight. You're working very... Have you more papers or messages? I'll take them now. I'll take them now. <laughs> Isn't he very... He can do anything. He's very versatile. Yes. I have one last topic to come sure. to before we finish. But we, we'll all start a few minutes extra tonight. Okay. But as I was saying, this is what I want to talk to you about. I'm going to surprise you now. Right. Here is something now. You have to see, because yeah. just the element of surprise, yeah. I hid it. Right. right? Okay. I have, you know, go ahead. Okay, but before I unveil this now to you as a surprise, okay. I read Dan is feverishly writing a few more. Okay. Yeah, and here's what he said. A car remembers he used to rent a black and white TV from Vincent. <laughs> <laughs> On the eve of the All-Ireland Limerick versus Kilkenny in 1973 it broke down mm -hmm. Vincent delivered a colour TV 
for them to stand in. Right. Now, does a, a good turn never go astray? Never go astray. Thanks to the co- for what's that? That's nice, no? That's very nice. You Thank gave you. a coloured one. Okay. But they are in 1973. And that was the year Limerick won? That's the other one. Won, won the All Ireland. That's God, quite right. The beat the Clinic. Well, no, that's nobody thought. Nice thought, thought, yes. Um, Vincent, aside now from this conversation, we complain about the world and life. And all. Aren't there a lot of lovely people? No, there, that's yeah? true, very true, yes. Isn't it, isn't yeah. it worth living? I say 98% are oh, of God. excellent people. There's lovely people. Yeah. You'll always get a few people. In, in our youth, in your youth and my youth, yeah. I'm sure you had people who begrudged you yeah. your success yeah. in electricity. Yeah. 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 Pascal and I had people who begrudged us. Yeah. And the usual one was, two, two things. One was, well... Are you still cutting them? <laughs> yeah. And the next thing was, right walk in, he said, here's the man with all the money. Yes. All the money. I wait till I tell him after about the big money that was in, 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 uh, in uh, show business. Show business. Now, a caller has a receipt for her first bike, which was £11 in 1948. Tell me, Jackie, Jackie, Jackie Bras. That has to be, yeah. yeah. A caller has a receipt for her first bike, bike. which £11 in 1948. 11 pounds. I wonder if the caller's still writing it, huh? <laughs> Up on your bike. Well, thank you, sir or madam. She thank still is. Thank you very much indeed. She says the caller is still riding the bike. That's my. But the caller's still riding the bike. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose, I suppose it has rubber grips. It has a gear case. Yeah. A carbide lamp. Do you remember car? I do indeed. I do, yes. I do. And you were, when they broke down at the side of the road at night, you went into the car on the road and you got it going again. <laughs> but I want to tell you the nefarious act that you performed to get it going. But you didn't go to a tap. No. Anyway, a caller yeah. bought a record player when she was 26, many years ago. She's happy to say it's still in perfect order. Things were built to last back in those... Will that be right? That was very true, yeah. In the world. She brought me you. Good. From Vincent Pinocchio, yeah. a record player. Well, 20, and he's still gone strong. That's marvellous. A record player. Yeah. I, so you could say... I'd have to go back again. Down. John McCormick <laughs> now to, yeah. to, 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 to buy his own. Yeah. And the one machine. Now, have, thank you, Darren, for those messages. Now, ladies, Darren, we'll, we'll keep it for me this morning, Vincent, because I want to unveil okay. to you to finish up our lovely conversation. And to judge, Darren tells me there was many more that he, he hadn't time to, okay. to jot down. And he said, while he was playing one, there was three or four of them buzzing away. So if Darren couldn't take your messages, ladies and gentle folk, give them to me some other night and I'll pass them on to Vincent. Okay. That's great. Right. Now, I, I honest now. I understand you. Now, my mother used to long ago, would she give me a sweet or, or something? Yeah. Shut your eyes, open your mouth, and okay. see what God will send you. That's right. Vincent, here, lo and behold, is a poster. Yeah. Ha-ha. <laughs> in red, white, and black. Yeah. Made by the Treaty Press in the old days. That's the right. license. Yeah. And it says, will I read it out? Do please, yeah. I'll read it out with the yeah. utmost of humility and modesty. I'm reading this. Yeah. Clark and Leash Lawn Tennis Club presents. Now, what do you want to present? Tom O'Donnell. Yeah. <laughs> Limerick's yeah, own comedian. Yeah. Yeah. Right. God, I was very at important. The, at the time. No, no, it was me at the top. No, variety time. Yeah. In the hall, Clark and Leash. Yeah. No. It was, actually, it was you organised this concert. That's, That's why right. I have it. Yeah. Sunday, the 10th of March, with Pascal O'Grady, comedy vocalist. Now, he's talking to Bill. He is. Pascal O'Grady, comedy vocalist. Yeah. Joan O'Carroll, Golden voice, soprano. Yes, I, I remember the girl, a love, lovely she voice she has, yes. Lovely girl. Living yeah. in Belfast. I think she's living in Belfast now. She she's she? a sister Mary here living in, uh, outside, in Corbley, I think. In Corbley, yes. Still around in Oh, she is. Hale Harty. Hale Harty. Lovely family, yeah, John right. O'Carroll. Next then is Oliver Braun. I remember Oliver well. You know, Ollie. He was Sicilian, c- c- he was, yes. Ollie Braun, himself and Paddy Glenn were the two comedians in the pantomime of that. That's right. Oliver Braun, a cardinalist. Compare. Compare, yeah. Now, on the programme also, ladies and gentlemen, is John Finucane in Songs Old and New. That's, that's your a, brother. That's my brother, yeah. Was yeah. John a singer? He was. He was in the Sicilians as well. I know he could sing in a crowd. Yeah, he could. <laughs> you know, well, I didn't know he could sing. No. Yeah. He's a big surprise. Big surprise. Chamber dancer Agnes Nolan. I remember her well. Now, that's Anthony's sister. That's right. A lovely girl. But she never girl. pursued dancing at all. Yeah. Yeah, I, she walked up on the uh, top of Willem Street there in Gleason's one time. Did she? Yeah. she has two brothers now with, yeah. with uh, Lord of the Dance. And one of them is top man with one crowd. And he's coming home to marry a girl, Sean O'Shea's daughter. Lovely. Sean O'Shea, the singer. Yeah. Not the pocket bully now, the local yeah. man. Yeah. 
Go on, but now he's a great pal of yours. He's Eamon O'Connor, uh, out of right. Florida. He's, uh, Eamon O'Connor, direct from American TV debut. Yeah, debut. Debut. Debut, that's right, Tim. Uh, you know, he was over in America with the Ted Mack show. At the time. With, with, with Michael Ryan, the Spoons man. Oh, yeah, he only died Eamon. a couple of years ago. Michael Ryan. I know him. Oh, I know he's alive and well. No, Michael Ryan. Oh, no. The, oh, I know. You're the, the party. I'm thinking the party. Sorry. I know. You're thinking the party. I am. Party. No, this is Michael Spoons. Right. From St. Mary's Park. Yeah, he's I know. On television with me. I know him well. I know him. Eamon O'Connor. Yeah. Now, Austin Graham. Another famous That's yeah. before he joined Donnie Collins' band. That's right. Yeah. And another thing. Donny Collins played the opening night of Drumgeen. He was he was the company. He was the he was no he was, he was he was the big band there the first night. Vincent, I thought Jimmy Shan played the opening night there. Well, maybe we could check it out, but I, I think I know I know respectfully. Yeah, all right, okay. At, in those days, okay. Donny Collins could never play in Limerick City. I see because the city bands, yeah. Tom Glynn's committee, okay. wouldn't allow a small band in. Right, but they did. But I tell you something, that was broken. You're very near the truth. That was broken by Donny Collins. Right. Because I was on I was a young fella, but I was on the committee of the Scouts yeah. and we organized a rag dance and we had terrible difficulty getting Donny Connells in to play at the Stella. Because they wouldn't they, the yeah, city yes, crowd allowed him in. Oh I see. Yeah. But that's Austin I Graham. I, I know the man, yeah. Singing Troubadour. Yeah. No. Caroline and Carkinley schools of dancing. Yeah. They would open the show, I presume, at that time. They would. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Now, next. And the new quiz game. Now, you invented this game. <laughs> and if you patented that, you'd be making a bomb. Oh, Can't yeah. guess it. Yeah. Like who wants to be made in there? <laughs> see you, E.W.S.I.T. Right. That's a good title, actually. Guess it, yeah. I only saw it no, last night when I found this post. Oh, yeah, okay. Guess it. Car teams, Cark and Leash, Young Farmers Club, club yeah. versus Cark and Leash, Lawn, Lawn Tennis, tennis Club. club. That's 8 p.m. sharp. No, Dan, are you listening up back there? Listen to the prices. Admission, three shillings and two shillings. Right. And fellow said to me, God, you made you cleaned up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> three sh was 15 pence. That's right. And 10 pence. And 10 pence. That's right. 10 pence. And that was your, and you gave us a big meal after it. That's right. Well, I don't remember that, but I'm sure you No, I have a question for you. Who compared that show? Con Shannon. Con, the uh, famous Con Shannon, auctioneer. Con Shannon, Con he did, he did, yeah. with a big Oxford accent. <laughs> he was the best spoken man in Limerick. At the time. Oh, he still is, he's still good. Lovely man. Great. But he's a very cultured man. Yes, sir. Well, now, are you surprised at that? I am, absolutely. What, what year was that? You cannot tell what me, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it must be prior to 71. Yeah, yeah so Because yeah, three yeah. shillings and two. Yeah. Uh, Decimal currency came in after yeah, that. Isn't that a great poster? It's wonderful to keep. I, I donate that to whoever wants it out in Carkinlish. Oh, there, I said For someone in Carkinlish. Yes, I, I'll find out because someone might love to have well, that. Well, a lot know. of my posters around the country, and frames. Yeah, yeah. And that was. Is that good now? It's brilliant. Right in Carkinlish. Yeah. That's Austin Graham and three shillings and two shillings. Vincent, I thought now you liked that. Oh. Only that you're retiring from your shop, okay. I'll give it to you for the shop above. Oh no, it's just a wonderful thing to have because it's a memory, it's a wonderful memory because yes. Carter Leach Lawn Tennis Club became very big out there. Yeah. I might remember uh, Paddy Ryan out there. He was a wonderful organiser. Died before his time, if I may say, under his good wife. Vincent, still. I'm sorry to say, but time, time marches on. <laughs> Did you enjoy your little chat with me? Oh, great, great night, and thank you very much, Tom. And I don't know. Thank I know, I have you. to say thank you. Man, you're a yeah. man, you're spending your work hard yeah. and you have, you're a good family, you're a good family and you're enjoying life and I'd say you're going to enjoy it all the more. Well, I hope to be able to do other things for people to help them out if I possibly can. Well, you're very involved with J.P. McManus, too. Well, yeah, I was on his committee and that's what... He's, he's a wonderful man. There was 15 million distributed there every few weeks. And everyone got a few shillings. They all got money, which is marvellous. Yeah, marvellous for the city. Great, isn't he a great man? He's a wonderful man, there's no doubt about it. Wonderful man. No doubt about yeah, it. That's right. I mean, he's on a so kind of a man and that's what it's all about and what I loved about Mr. McManus was I never met the man yeah. I often advertised his various things yeah, yeah. but I, his golf tournaments but I never met the man but when he won that was it the national he won uh, yeah, well, it was a big race in Chelsea. It was a big race over. Yeah, what, Chelsea. Were there last Easter year? Yeah, Easter break. Easter break, yeah. And unfortunately, it won't be on this year, I think, because of the moment. Yeah, well, of course, the first Well, anyway, this is a scale, Ella, sadly. Right, is, yeah. We all hope and pray that things will yeah. get blessed, God. But I know that Mr. McManus, anyway, when, he was, when, the, when the world spotlight was on him, and uh, 
prize was being presented and all that, he, he just said to the compere, do you mind if I say hello to my mother? She's in hospital out in the region. Well, the good news she's at midst, home at the moment. In the midst of world oh, that's, acclaim, that's right, John. he had to single out his mother to wish her well in the... Wasn't that lovely? That's lovely. She's still in great form. She lives outside I'm in Bellico. Wonderful form. Well, now, Vincent, you're in great health and you're in good form and you're looking well. Thank you. With your red... <laughs> jacket and you're like a boy of 21. Yeah. Listen, Vincent, I wish you and Myra, your wife, your two lovely daughters, yeah. and your son-in-law in their business, yeah. ever, I'm voicing the opinion, I'm sure, of all those listening in tight and who did like the woman, they honest, for the service you gave to Limerick. Thank you. You gave employment, and you, you helped to build up, and you made a contribution, and all your family made a contribution to the life of Limerick City and County. Thank you. To thank you for a happy life. Thank you. And it is my earnest wish, speaking on behalf of all our listeners, uh, to, to, say, to say that you'll be around for many a long day so. yet. I hope so, Tom. With the help of God. So thank, thank you. you. Good night, Vincent. Thanks, Tom. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night, yes. That's brilliant. Well, ladies and gentlemen, now, as Mr. Finucan makes his way out to the hospitality suite, uh, it's time to say good night. Have we an outgoing record to say good night to? Uh, from, from Joe Locke. Yeah, well, hold, I'll pick one from Joe Locke now. I'm sure, I, I'm sorry, if, I hope Vincent Finucan doesn't think now I rushed him out, but it's getting very late now. But anyway, he has to be home anyway. Now, wait till I tell you. We'll pick something nice now here. No, we don't know. I know it's a bit corny. Darren, this is a bit corny, but it suits the occasion. D -d -d wait on, just to say, I wish you all a last goodbye, Joe Locke. But before we put Joe Locke on to say goodnight to a very happy night to Vincent Finocan for the lovely night he gave us. And it's been taped all over the show. In fact, if I was in time, then, then we could have arranged a television show for Vincent. But maybe at a future date. Uh, as I say, uh, it's the last one, there. Ladies and gentlemen, Tom O'Donnell saying good night to you all. Thank you for all the messages. I hope you enjoyed the evening. T big thank you to Vincent on his way out now to the hospitality suite and on his way out home where he's living next door to the future Taoiseach outside in Goldabor, Mr Noonan, who gave a great account of himself tonight on television. And please God, maybe we'll have a Limerick Taoiseach. For the help of God. Uh, so anyway, Darren... You worked very hard tonight, and thank you very much. Now, Dan, one last commercial now. You're on your own show tomorrow night at 7 o'clock until 10 Sunday night. Commencing at 7, finishing at 10. I hope that you have a very happy night and successful night, and you'll be back with me next week. And thank you for the great night. Darren Maloney uh, did me a great service, and I'm very thankful to you. So, ladies and gentlemen, we'll go out now with... Joe Locke and he's singing goodbye and I'll say goodbye but with the help of God now I'll be back with you again this night week at 10.30 good night God bless you all and may the Lord
Hello everybody, Tom O'Donnell here once again to remind you of my weekly Saturday night show which I prepared especially for the enjoyment of dear hearts and gentle people. I begin at 10.30 and continue until 1 o'clock a.m. I hope you can join me and share many happy moments of music and memories of times past. Bye-bye. Radio Limerick 1 is now being rebroadcast by your local community groups on 105 FM and 90.5 FM between RTE Radio 1 and 2 FM.